All right. Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you so well. Good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining our seventh session, our deal days, our drop everything and learn. Today, we are really excited for the lineup that we have, but a couple of housekeeping things to get started. Um, we, uh, if you would keep your mics, um, your mics muted until the very end unless you're a speaker, of course, and y'all have control. But we're going to have open time for questions, um, possibly at the end. Um, so if you'll keep those. And then any chat questions that are questions that you have as you go along. I know that uh, Kirsten's going to be monitoring the chat. We've got other team members in here that will be monitoring the chat. So pop those into the chat. Uh, we are recording this session. And so we will be sharing that out with everyone once, um, once we finalize. And so we are really excited to get started and welcome our special guest this morning, all the way coming from Southwest Arkansas Education Cooperative and podcast guru, uh, David Henderson. We are so excited to have you here. Along with him is Kirsten Wilson from the Digital Learning Unit and podcast novice, as she says, although I think this is her second year of running a podcast. So we are really excited to, to learn from both of you this morning. I'm going to hand it over to you now, David, to get us started. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, inviting us in to uh, talk about podcasting. And this is going to be sort of a, a, a a high level tip of the iceberg uh, kind of uh, presentation. Um, and uh, we're just going to get in, talk about uh, how to get started, uh, ways to use podcasting in your classroom, uh, and then also kind of some life lessons. Some basically you get to learn from uh, our mistakes, our growth points, our pain points, all that kind of good stuff. And so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. Kristen, I don't know if you want to say something. I just have one thing to say, and I want you guys to know that this is actually David's and my anniversary of him uh, mentoring me into the world of podcasting about this same time two years ago in the middle of the pandemic when I was going stir crazy. I went to an hour session that David offered on podcasting. So this is a celebratory anniversary presentation um, David and I are going to be celebrating and y'all can join with us. That's, That's right. Really, this was just an excuse for us to get together and celebrate this. So thank you guys for coming along for the ride. So let's, I'm going to talk about my experience with podcasting. Uh, how did I get here? How did, how, where do we go from here? Kind of what's happened along the way. So uh, I'm, I, I didn't officially introduce myself, uh, David Henderson, Technology Coordinator for Southwest Arkansas Education Cooperative in Hope, uh, and I'm also a co-host slash co-founder of the EduTech Guys podcast. That's E-D-U-T-E-C-H-G-U-Y-S. As we like to say, without you, it's just EdTech, so it's EduTech Guys. Um, so uh, the way it started, uh, my, my co-host's name is Jeff. Jeff and I back in the old days, uh, were actually uh, ex-radio guys. And we were sitting around at lunch uh, one day, and we had talked about, we started reminiscing about our radio days, et cetera. And about that time, podcasting, um, podcasting has kind of come and gone in waves. And the kind of the first wave of podcasting uh, had come, and it was, it was already kind of going down, and it was sort of trying to make a comeback. Uh, so this was probably about five, six years ago, somewhere in there. Uh, and so we're sitting at lunch. We said, you know what? We could start a podcast. We'll just throw a mic up and start talking. So that's pretty much exactly what we did. Um, the very, In fact, the next day uh, or close to the next day, uh, one of the things that was happening in the state of Arkansas was the uh, testing was just getting switched over to the, to the new program and I can't believe I didn't write that down. I, it escapes me now. Um, but our very first guest was uh, Hope Allen, who was the state testing coordinator uh, at the time. And the, she was the first person we had on to talk about the changes that were coming, et cetera. Also at that same time, uh, Corwin Publishing was hosting an event at Hempstead Hall, which is the local uh, auditorium venue here in Hope. Uh, and so we went and asked our corresponding uh, bosses and also talked with Corwin Press and said, hey, 
we want to set up a table with some microphones and just grab people who are walking by this session or, or this event and throw them on the air and talk to them about what they're doing. Um, it was met with uh, skepticism and yet very like inquisitive. It was kind of like, you want to do what? And in those days, we actually did our podcast live, which was even scarier now that I'm thinking back. Um, ultimately, though, as we kind of went through things, uh, we've changed to a recording format. It may just scheduling is the main reason for that, uh, not to mention some of the things that happen during any live uh, broadcast. Um, and so there were some things that we struggled with. Um, one of them for sure is time. Um, podcasting can take a chunk of time. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, consistency is a big one. Uh, putting, making sure that you put out your content, you know, regularly. Um, we pretty much try to stick to a weekly show. Some things happen, i.e. the pandemic. Um, the pandemic hit and uh, in some ways it, it afforded us an opportunity to do more, but then in other ways uh, it kind of limited what we could do. Uh, and so we kind of grew through that. And so uh, we are finally uh, talking about the future and what's next. We're finally at the point where we are doing uh, interviews pretty well filled up uh, Tuesdays and Thursday afternoons after work. This is something we do, you know, this is a side gig, as it were. Um, and we are also doing uh, conferences. We've been all over the country. Um, in fact, uh, in January, we just, we got, we went to FATC in Florida, just got back from there. Um, and, uh, we we set up a table and we interview folks. So that's kind of that's kind of where we were, where we've been, and kind of where we're going. Uh, and so from there, uh, what I mainly want to talk to you about today is how easy it is to get into it, especially now. When when we were first getting into it, it wasn't too difficult necessarily, but it's definitely way easier now uh, than it has been. So. A couple of the key high points that I want to hit are planning, scheduling, and recording and sharing. And for the most part, that's what podcasting is. Um, if, you're, if you need kind of a working, I don't want to say definition, but if you need kind of a working concept of podcasting, podcasting is essentially taking an audio recording, putting it out there for the world to hear, and providing a way for people to get to it easily ideally being pushed to them. That's where the cast part comes from podcasting is that it is pushed to their devices so that they can subscribe to it and get it on their device really without having to do much work. So as far as the planning goes, um, we kind of stick with, you know, the five W's and the H, the what, when, where, hi, who, how, how who, all that stuff. Um, so what are you going to talk about? Where are you going to record? Why are you doing this? Why do you want to have a podcast? Um, when are you going to podcast? Who are the hosts and the guests, if you're going to have that? And then also, how are you going to do it? And we're going to cover all of that quickly as we you know, go through uh, this session this morning. So scheduling is a big, big part of that. As I mentioned before, uh, we had some issues with uh, getting people scheduled. It was, we had issues trying to find the time to figure out when we we're going to do it. So that becomes a big part of it. So uh, one of the big questions that you want to ask yourself is when do you plan to record? Uh, is this something that you want to do maybe once a week? Uh, is it something you're going to do once a month? Is it something you're going to do every couple of weeks? Just whatever is going to work for you. And one of my big I don't know. One of the things I hope you take away from this, one thing to just, you know, hammer in, nothing is in stone. It, this is you, this is as flexible as you are able to be and or as rigid as you need it to be. All right. So don't be afraid of monitoring and adjusting. We do that all the time in education. Same thing for podcasting. Uh, so in addition to when you're going to record, you also, when are you going to post this? When are you going to release it? So uh, as I had mentioned before, uh, we are currently recording just about every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon, and, but we release one podcast per week. So what that's doing for us is building up shows 
that we've got ready, you know, they're already put together and edited and ready to go, but we just release them each week. So right now, I think we are about three weeks ahead, which is awesome, because that means that should something weird happen between, you know, now and those other episodes, they're still going to get released. So uh, definitely want to think about that. And then also in terms of scheduling, you want to um, figure out when and how you're going to reach out to guests. And then real quickly, uh, recording and sharing, what equipment are you, are you going to use and how are you going to share your podcast? So we're going to get into all of that. So, all right. So once you start, you want to always, hopefully, <laughs> be improving. Um, that's, that's the ultimate goal. It's, it's like with anything that you're learning. The first, and, and I'm just going to tell you, your first episodes, and, and Kristen is either going to back me up on this, or um, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to call you out on this by any stretch. The first few episodes that you do, and by few, it's different for each person, but they're probably going to suck. I'm just going to throw that out there, okay? And it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. Absolutely. The idea is that you always get better go ahead well and i will say if you go back and look at podcasts and if you listen to a podcast if you go to the very first episodes of some of the best podcasts mm -hmm. that you listen to they're not awesome either um and so just like like get past the perfection piece and just jump into it so that's the whole you know the title dipping your toe, toes in the pool of podcasting i say jump right in or dive right in don't even just dip your toes. <laughs> don't, don't even dip your toes just jump in and Go yeah, for the swimming. For sure. um, so let's just start. We'll, we'll go through this real quickly here. Uh, you you want to start simple. Uh, and some of you may have picked up on that my subtitles are all song titles, right? We've only just begun. So some now these are going to be from my generation and older. So if you're younger, bear with me. Um, but we've only just begun. Starting simple. If you are in this session right now, which of course you are, you already have a device in your possession that you can use for podcasting. So whether you're using a phone, whether you're connected by a tablet, whether you're on a Chromebook, whether you're on a PC, Mac, whatever, it doesn't matter. You've already got the piece of equipment because the only thing you really need is a way to record your voice or the voices of the people that you're going to bring in. It's already got a microphone built into it. You're good to go. The other pieces that you'll need are a host and I don't work for anchor. I'm not getting paid by anchor. Um, but I will tell you anchor.fm is the, for my opinion, one of the best places for you to host your podcast. The reason a it's free B it's tied in with Spotify. So they're actually working on some ways to be able to incorporate copyrighted, you know, commercial music into your podcast, which is crazy to think of now. Um, but it is very simple. It works on any platform. Uh, and then as far as starting simple, things you want to think about are, what are you going to talk about? What are your topics? Uh, who are the hosts, right? Are you the host or are you going to have somebody else be the host? And then who are the guests if you're going to have guests? Well, and wanna, David, I also uh -huh. wanted to add with anchor.fm, they have a new plugin where they put, they plug into uh, WordPress. So if you want to make it a vlog or a podcast blog, and this morning in my inbox from Anchor, they are also exploring the idea of video podcasting that's tied in with it as well. So they're constantly, upgrading and doing things to make it more dynamic um, and you can do just as much or as little in anchor as you want it's really awesome yeah it, it really is and i'm um, not paid by anchor either yeah, <laughs> oh. um, so moving on from starting simple we want to talk about moving outside of the box or thinking outside of the box and the song I chose is called Living on the Outside uh, because I chose it specifically because most of you have probably never heard the song and most likely don't know the artist. The artist is from, uh, it's, it's Nick C. He happens to be my cousin. So that's also part of the reason why I did it. Shout out to him. Um, but I want you to think about uh, the content, what you're going to do with it. And I threw up a bunch of acronyms here because I want you to think about different prospects for your podcast. T to T, so teacher to teacher. T to S, teacher to students. T to P, 
I wasn't sure what letter to put there. So that is more like teachers to the public or your community using it for outreach. Uh, and then you also have things like student to student, student to teacher and student to the public. So things for, uh, so for example, teacher to teacher is generally uh, you as an educator are talking to other educators through your podcast. Teachers to students, you may be doing things like lesson reviews, you might be uh, providing additional content, uh, other ideas, some things for their students to think about. When you're talking to the public, we're talking about things such as uh, talking to your stakeholders in general. You're, you could be putting out um, weekly, hey, this is what's going on in class. Uh, it could be like, you know, your word lists. It could be, it depends on, you know, whatever else you're looking for or whatever else you are doing in your classroom. As for the students, um, podcasting is great for things like as something as simple as either book talks or book walks. They could do that, right? Student to student. Um, student to teacher. Podcasts are a really cool way for students to demonstrate content knowledge. Uh, again, you know, a lot of it depends on the subject and what it is you're trying to get out of them. Um, but I've heard and seen student work that gets turned in via podcast where they are interviewing people key to demonstrating content knowledge. Some students work with other students and they develop, you know, a, a rap about Macbeth and they put that in podcast form. I mean, you really think outside the box. Anything is possible. Uh, students to community. They could be talking about projects. Uh, there are many, especially in elementary uh, schools, but there are many schools that they have their students record and produce the podcast each week. And they cover things like these are the lunch menus and this is the these are the words of the week. And this is the 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 um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, like like character is the is the concept of the week, and they talk about character and, and you know those types of things. Well, and David, I also mm -hmm. wanted to say that this is also um, an awesome way for students that maybe have um, they're not able to have their face or pictures um, mm -hmm. through social media, but if you do a recording and don't do any identifiers, that student gets the opportunity to experience digital and, liter um, digital and media literacy creation without having to worry about, um, you know, the teacher being limiting that student to be out there visibly because it's the voice. And, and just so you guys know, everybody knows when their baby is on the podcast, it's going to get shared multiple times in multiple ways, and it's going to get your information out. Um, so capitalize on using your kids because everybody wants to hear from the kids. Exactly. That is exactly. And if you're interested in starting a podcast that is not necessarily in either of those kind of arenas, then by all means, you can start one based on hobbies you have, interests you have, tips and tricks that you've learned along the way, however you want to build that. And speaking of building, you, we're gonna, you, know, you wanna talk about, you wanna think about rather, uh, promotion. Uh, how are you gonna promote this within your district, within the building, within your stakeholder community, uh, whether it's through the school Facebook page or Twitter accounts or however you wanna build that out. Um, in-house, inwardly, and then also um, out of the house or outhouse. Uh, so you want to talk, you know, you want to think about how does that get promoted beyond? And that's where, again, Anchor FM, they tie into the big distributions. Like you can, with Anchor FM, you can get set up on Google Play Store, on Apple iTunes podcasts. I mean, the big dogs, and you just throw it out there and work with that uh, entity and use their links, et cetera, to promote what you plan to do with your podcast or as your podcast grows. And then speaking of growing, you want to become the king of wishful thinking in that you want to ultimately plan for some better equipment, maybe expanded programming, possibly look into monetization. One of the other things that Anchors offers is right out of the box, you could be brand new and have zero podcasts under your belt. There's a little check box that says, yep, I'd like to monetize this. And then you start putting out content, they match advertisers with your listeners. And eventually, you may end up finding that you've got ads running on your podcast, and you get to pocket a little bit of change. So 
it's it really is there's no limit as to how this works or what you can do so how are schools in particular using the podcast methods teachers as we've talked about before you could do reviews for students you could be providing additional information uh, newsletter to parents, students, again, content knowledge, helping younger students. You can see administrators. There are many administrators who are using podcasting as a way to reach out to everyone that they affect. Announcements, community involvement. Uh, and then you can also use podcasting as a way to address standards. Again, with demonstrating content knowledge, getting the students to participate and show those standards that you are trying to get them to meet through this particular medium. And I will also add there, it is an exceptional opportunity for them to experience the creation of digital literacy and media literacy. Instead of just being consumers, they become creators in the podcast, which is an essential skill for our students um, in the day and age that they work in and live in. Um, when they leave us from high school and they go post high school, they have to have some ability and capacity to create in a digital environment. And this is a wonderful opportunity for them to do that and build that skill set. Yes. So David is an inspiration to me. And um, this is my story of how I got started. I thought about this way too long. I was not like David and his buddies. And um, I actually thought about it for two years before I even jumped in. I did lots of research and I honestly got overwhelmed by all the help online. So I would actually encourage you to watch this or listen to this and then just go do it. Don't, don't go and read everything on it because it can be super overwhelming. Um, when I attended this one hour session with David, he made it so simple to me and he introduced Anchor to me that it just, it was basically, I jumped in and plugged in and it happened for me. Um, I identified what my content focus was um, because I needed to have a structure or focus to my podcast and mine is called the Bulldog Educator Podcast. I was in, I, I wanted people to know it was education related, but I didn't want it to be so specific that it boxed me into only specific things about education, but it gave me uh, the opportunity to go any direction within an education that I wanted to. Um, I actually Googled to make sure that it was a title that hadn't been used before. So that's one of the things, if you're thinking about titles, go out there and look and see what may be out there just so you make sure that you don't duplicate or have a podcast that has a similar title to someone else's. Um, that's just very helpful um, in, in regards to that. Um, I use the free content creators to brand. Um, Canva is one of my favorite ways to create um, images in, um, for my brand. Um, I also, there is the option for free WordPress. I already had my own blog and I'm gonna tell you guys something really quickly here. When I figured out the name, I went ahead and spent the money to secure domain name, the Bulldog Educator, because I did not want somebody else to do that. That does require a little bit of cash. It's less than $100. But if, you, if this is something you wanna do and you don't want somebody else to grab your domain, I do recommend that you consider doing that piece. And that is one thing I did. I will tell you, I've done this for two years and my monetization um, wouldn't even buy me a hamburger. So um, I, I'm not doing this for the money. This is a, more of a hobby for me. Um, it's a great way for me to internalize learning, reflect and then share. But, um, so that was one monetary investment that I did make. I also um, put in my cart, Amazon cart, a, a package with a Yeti mic and a headset and let it sit there until the price dropped. And then I bought it. And in the meantime, I just used my headphones with my laptop and made it work um, until then. Um, and and it, was, it was great for me. I have even used my phone a couple of times because I wanted to with how it recorded on my phone versus on my laptop um, just to see what it would be like um, and it wasn't bad um, recording off of my phone and and so those are some options as well um, and that's really kind of got me going in those ideas I will also tell you that my ideas come from really strange places if you do go to my podcast my latest episode that I just released last night came from inspiration of being in airports and having to mess with all of my luggage 
and of getting in and out of bathrooms and the whole idea of universal design for learning. So my last podcast is a little bit of potty talk. So, <laughs> but if, um, if you uh, are interested in podcasts, um, we actually at DESE have several podcasts. Um, I don't know if Donnie Lee is still on here, but he is the producer for all the DESE podcasts. And there are six podcasts right now that are actively um, being produced, including Smack Talk, Aware, and Guide for Life, which you can find on the DESE website. And then our digital learning unit has a podcast called Living in Beta Mode, which you can find on the Research and Technology webpage under Digital Learning Unit, and that podcast can be found there. Um, and yes, Donnie is a podcast rock star. Um, I honestly, uh, when I do my recordings, I can opt to do them from my office and Donnie has all the equipment to make it happen, but he has his podcast studio in Harrison at OUR and I drive almost two hours when I do my recordings because it is so much fun to do podcasts with Donnie. So if you are with ADE and you're interested in that, um, and you don't have a podcast through the uh, ADE or DESE, check with um, Donnie. And if you are someone interested, please reach out to David and Donnie. Both of them are excellent resources when you're considering a podcast for your school. Um, so the next thing that I'm just going to, um, to say is, hey, and now it's your turn. We want to turn it over to you. And there's a couple of things I want you to, and David kind of alluded to this earlier, Listen to other podcasters and maybe find a rhythm or something you like about how that podcaster does something and bring it into your own practice and don't worry about perfection. Uh, the other thing is seek ideas in unlikely places. Topics, like I said, can be found at the airport in the bathroom, um, but can find in, uh, around any corner in any situation. And then we have left our contact information here. And like I said before, David is your resource for this I'd be more than happy to help you as well but this is this is David's bag and he is the expert so any questions got some great links in the chat Kirsten to some to the podcast from David Henderson so you got that information check that out Yes, he put in there, uh, there's a middle school and then Trevor Muir, um, he is a teacher and his podcast, um, he just, just started it recently, but it is going viral um, with other teachers. And, and then the NPR student podcast, which they also promote students doing certain things and they can get awards from NPR, which is really cool as well, because we love to focus on student voice. It always does. Does it draw more? I mean, do you check the analytics on that? When you get the student voice on there, are you getting more people to listen to it? Like people want to hear the kids, right? Well, I'll talk personally about, I had uh, several students early on in the pandemic on as guests and I had one of their teachers host it and I kind of stood back for mine. And that is still the most our listened to podcast of all of my analytics that I have on all my podcasts is when I had the student guests. Well, I'll know it, I love it, to hear student voices. Go well, ahead. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, it's, a, it's, it's like they say in TV, you know, you put kids and pets and that will, you know, jack up your numbers for sure. And, and it really does. When you get the students involved uh, and, and get them on there, that those are definitely going to be the analytics that are going to jump off the charts. Now, I, I will say uh, many times it is also if you if you are going to do a podcast that's got guests, if you can get some, you know, if you, if you can win yourself some some decently sized named, you know, guests, that also helps. And I will tell you from my experience, although sometimes it's not the, the process is difficult to to kind of work through to get the guests secured the initial reach is easy. Shoot them an email and say, hey, I'm doing this podcast. I'd love to have you on. Uh, and I, I'm not doing this as a way to name drop, but I just, because I want you to understand that, you know, we've talked to people like we've had the governor on our show at least twice. Um, we've had 
uh, Carrie Byron from Mythbusters on the show. Um, we've had leaders in educational technology, you know, Richard Byrne, David Burgess, teach like a pirate guy, you know, so it's, and it was very simple as saying, Hey, we'd like to have you on the show to talk about X, Y, Z. Again, some folks are open to like, Oh yeah, I can do that. Like with the governor, you got to jump through some hoops. Uh, and, and, and he actually, you know, you've got to have the questions ahead of time and, you know, you can't deviate. And so there was not a lot of, uh, banter necessarily but it was still great conversation we got the content out there and again those are some of the shows that uh, analytics wise do some of the best um, and I but don't be afraid don't be afraid to have fun and, and just enjoy the ride well and i will say this david about podcasters once you meet other podcasters even if they're like superstars they're so excited to help you out um and and a lot of them like david i'm gonna have him on mine at sometime soon on the bulldog educator and then i'm also gonna ask him to do living in beta mode at some point but um yeah, that they're say yeah I'll do a podcast with you which I'm like holy moly and she's written like 18 books and um they just want people to succeed it's a really cool culture well you also kind of hit both of the things you know Kirsten if you're getting student voice and you're named bulldog educator so you brought in pets because pets are not going to work actually on the show probably right but <laughs> you have a cute logo so maybe that helps that's Any right. other questions that we have? I know we're getting close. We're 12 o'clock. Don't want to keep anyone over, but anything else that you want to ask of our experts before we wrap up? I got to jump in and just agree with the kids and pets being high risk, high reward. You know, <laughs> it's, it's one of those deals of you can, you can strike gold or you can strike out. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, you're so right. You would know I, well. <laughs> I will say this, though. My biggest episode across any any of the shows that I do that I'm kind of helping folks produce and distribute and whatnot was Alice Cooper with Arkansas Ware. Um, not the Alice Cooper you might think of. Um, I'm not, I don't have that much rock star clout, but she's a, she's a teacher up here at Jasper who is uh, working through her 50th year. And um, she's been at, she's been in a couple different conferences and, and uh, yeah, she is totally a rock star. She is a rock star. Um, I talk about her, in fact, Stephen Walker and I were speaking about her, he's on here. We were speaking about her yesterday that she is the, the talks I go to. I know that we were talking about your podcast uh, or maybe it was Stephen, I can't remember, one of my team members, that being the most viewed one, is that the most viewed one that you have is with Alice? She's amazing if y'all can By hear far. her. Yeah, it had it, it holds the single day record and the all time record. Wow. Which is easy to do with my stuff. It doesn't <laughs> you know, but at the same time it done it pretty it it done it it done it by half again the next contender. So yeah. Oh, well, she's brought me to tears. So she's amazing. So listen to that one. <laughs> I get to live up here among people like that too. Imagine. That's awesome. You're she's, I'm jealous. She's hey an guys. Old school family friend. I'm poking fun, but yeah, we've I've known Alice my whole life. She is uh she's as good a folks as you'd think. Well, she's known among our team and and among the work and education that she's done. And it's it's amazing to hear her story. So check out that podcast that Donnie has. Guys, uh, we're going to wrap up. But the next um, event we have coming up, we've got Drop Everything and Learn coming up next Thursday, next third Thursday of May um, at May 19th. And we've got, I think, Lance, you're on here. We've got our spreadsheet. Yeah. Guru. Thank you so much for sending your headshot. And, and you're welcome. And stuff. and to confirm, this is this is Google spreadsheets that I've focused on. So we're not going to do a lot on Excel. All but, right. I might, I'll Google fix stuff. that before I send that out. Yeah. Uh, Lance, thank you so much. And also he'll be uh, joined with Katie Pittenger um, from our team with the Digital Learning Unit. Thank y'all all for joining us. Excellent information. Thank you, David. Thank you, Kirsten. This was a great session. We appreciate you and we look forward to seeing you all next month. We'll be sending a copy of this recording out. Thanks again. Thanks, guys. <laughs>